What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to the episode of Locked On Buckeye. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. It is Thursday, October 29th. The year 2020. Today starts starts part one of a two part series or two back to back days, uh, days before the game, helping us get ready for the upcoming matchup against Penn State. Today we talk about the offense in all three segments. Tomorrow it is about the defense. You can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. Also, you can follow the podcast on Twitter as well at locked on Buckeye. Like I mentioned, today starts a two part series or. Uh, Two parts in preparation for this weekend's matchup against Penn State. In segment number two, we will talk about Justin Fields and one thing he didn't do at all, did not do at all in game number one that I believe he will need to do in game number two for him to be successful. Segment three, we talk about the status of Chris Olave. But we begin today's show talking about the importance of the running game. Ohio State has a lineage, has a history, has a track record of having really, really good to elite running back play. You don't have, you don't have to go far. Just last year, J.K. Dobbins and how well he played, and we saw his progression from the 2018 season until the 2019 season. Lo and behold, we go into 2020 abnormal off season's different. You got a grad transfer in Trey Sermon. You got Master T coming off an injury. Trey Sermon was hurt as well last season. So you got guys coming off an injury, different, different preparation period. And you're wondering in game no in game number one, will we see a breakout guy? Will we will one of the two running backs that is projected to be projected to get the most or the bulk of the carries? Will one of them stand out and stick out and be the one that says, hey, I deserve the rock. Give me the ball. You know how it was in Friday Night Lights, the movie that came out when I was in high school. And trust me, I love that movie. I used to watch it all the time. Booby Miles made this statement. I'm sure when I say it, you're going to, you will remember it. Booby Miles said, hey, coach, put Booby in. Let him spin. And that's exactly what I was thinking. You're wondering who in the world would Ryan Day put in, or who would Tony Alford, excuse me, put in, and when, he, when they do get on the field, will they spin? Now, you know, it's, I'm being a little uh, facetious a little bit, but it's the truth. You're very curious about seeing who it is that is going to be the leader in the running back room, not just in a film room or in practice, but leader based off their production on the field. In game number one, you didn't see that there was also some miscues via the offensive line. The offensive line was not great. I believe that Josh Myers actually talked about that. I talked about this, I believe, on Tuesday. Tuesday, I believe it was Tuesday's episode, New Faces in New Places. Harry Miller, the left guard, was a backup center last year. So one, he didn't get very much playing time. But two, he's in a different position this year than he was last year. New faces in new places. Oh, the running backs I mentioned in the running back room, you also are going to have Trey Sermon, new, Master Teague, a bigger role than last year. So will he be the starter like he was against Nebraska? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we have to wait till Saturday night. Or will Trey Sermon be the starter? I don't know. You got to wait and see till, till Saturday night. The one thing Buckeye fans don't want to see this weekend, that I believe Penn State would love to see and would love this over and over and over and over again. It is Justin Fields being the leading rusher for the second game in a row. If you got guys in that defense that are chomping at the bit, trying to get back on the field, trying to get the sour and bad taste out of their mouth after that loss to Indiana. The one thing those guys want to do, and they know who the leader of the offense is, they know who the leader of the team is, which is Justin Fields. They know that if they get Justin Fields on the ground via the running game, not even just the, not even just the passing game, driving back and QB hits that way, simply just the run game, those, those hits, he's going to take over and over and over again, wear down his body, wear him down, wear him down, wear him down, just like a boxer. Those those repeated body shots over and over and over and over again. Those body shots in rounds eight, in rounds nine, in rounds 10, you can stop 
five, six, seven. But I, I went a little bit later in the match than maybe some people thought I should have with the scenario. Justin Fields with those QB hits via the running game. You don't want to see that. Offensive line, Josh Myers, the leader that you are. Very good that you spoke out and said, hey, we have to fix this. One key piece to the Buckeyes being successful this weekend is the running game. Who was Who's going to step up? I don't know. Hit me up on Twitter, at jstevens07. Hit me up. For those of you that are a part of the WKYC family, my Twitter handle's right there. You can see it there, WKYC in Cleveland. You guys can see that right there. Find me on Twitter. My DMs are always open. Go right there. Find me. Let me know who it is that you think that, that you think is going to be the best runner this weekend. If you say Justin feels great. I had a guy ask a question about Still Chambers, which I was not expecting. He said and he was thinking maybe more carries if the other two guys don't step up. That may be possible. I don't think so. But anything is possible right now when your two guys didn't really find the hole very well or didn't run like they were your top two backs in the running back room. Very, very questionable play from them. But it's game number one, different preparation. One person said maybe Ryan Day was very vanilla. That's fine. He can be very vanilla against Nebraska in game number one. But the thing about being very vanilla, being vanilla doesn't mean you don't have to, you can just miss blocks. Being vanilla doesn't, doesn't give you the ability and the right to miss the hole. No, not at all. That does not give you the liberty to do those two things. Whatever you want to say about vanilla play calls, whatever you want to say about it being game one, that's fine. But these guys are at Ohio State for a reason. Tony Alford kept in contact with Trey Sermon for a reason. Hey, who's who, who's gonna who's it gonna be? I don't know. I don't know. That's one thing I'm looking forward to this weekend is finding out who is going to step up, who is going to be the guy that we can look at and say, yeah, that running game is important. You you don't want you don't want Justin Fields being a team a Tim Tebow. No, 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 oh, ho, ho. no. You don't. One thing to key, one big key for the offense that is this weekend, establish the running game. Penn State, Penn State will allow you, and they will give you the ball. They will make mistakes. They had three turnovers. One was a, a lost fumble, I believe, early in the first, first quarter, I believe. Then the other two were interceptions thrown by Sean Clifford. They'll give you, they'll give you chances. Oh, what, another chance they'll give you? The kicker missed two field goals. So they'll give you, they'll give you chances. They'll give you chances to be able to have chances in fair and in, in good field position to score the ball. They'll, they'll give it to you. They'll, they'll give it to you. That's fine. They'll give it to you. New new offensive coordinator, uh, Kurt Shiraka from Minnesota. The, trust me, new offseason, abnormal offseason. It's abnormal for him as well. New surroundings, new players, new head coach. It's abnormal for him as well. As with as normal with. As abnormal as it has been, it doesn't give these guys a liberty to not play like they know they can play and like we believe they can play. Let's take a quick timeout. I got a word from Coors Light and from Rock Auto. When we come back, we'll talk about Justin Fields. One thing he did not do in game number one that he has to do in game number two. Do you ever feel like you're always on what do you do when you need a moment to chill? These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nothing but nonstop hustle all the time. Work, friends, family, a million pressing social issues, and an expectation to be on 24-7. Well, there's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. Coors Light wants you to know that no matter what sport is on this fall, Saturdays are your time. To chill. Watching football is therapeutic to fans. It is uninterrupted me time and an excuse to chill and drink beer. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door at get.coorslight.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. RockAuto.com is a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to RockAuto.com to shop for auto and body parts for hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules, 
in brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your car, your classic, or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose brands, specifications, and the prices you prefer. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com in game number one the casual observer or the person that covers college football the the entirety the national landscape of college football what do they do? This is it's normal. What do they do? The average person will go look at the box score, and it says something like this. Justin Fields, we're not going to look at the rushing game right now. Let's just focus on this passing game. The one thing that we believe needs to improve in certain areas. It goes something like this. I, I got that. I got it right here for you. Okay. 20 c- completions. 20. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me stop. 20 completions. 21 attempts. Oh, wait, that's good. That, that, that boy good right there. Okay. 276 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Okay. Okay. QBR, QBR is almost 100. That's almost perfect. Uh, QBR rating is rating on a scale of 100. So that, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That boy good. Now, 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 now. What do you see when you go from the box score? to watching the game itself. Before I go that far, I'll make this one quick comment. I'm a person that believes that the box score only tells a portion of the story. Ryan Roberts, who was a NFL Draft Bible, was here on the podcast, uh, I think a couple weeks ago. He's been on my main podcast, the Jay Stevens podcast, quite a bit. It, him and I are on the same page. We've had this conversation. You can't be a box score watcher. You cannot do that. Too many times people on television, people that host shows just like this one, they look at the box score and say, oh, wow, that's amazing. When in all actuality, the game could have been even better than what you saw in the box score. Why? Because you got a, bo- a box of 10 things that the quarterback needs to do, and they only they only did eight of them. You got two things there that stick out. They're like, if you do these two things, woo-wee, you're going to stick out way more than the other ones. You You, you will. So one thing that I noticed, 20 for 21. I won't go to the passing yards. I won't go to the touchdowns. I won't go to the INTs. I'll stick with the completion and attempt ratio. 20 completions, 21 attempts. Now, that one one incompletion, what was that? I talked about it previously on Locked On Buckeyes. That was an incomplete pass where Chris Olave had the ball in his hands, in his mitts, got undercut in the back center of the end zone, incomplete pass, no touchdown, no completion. So that was one. So really, you could say, ah, he should have been 21 for 21. You're asking, Jay, what are, you, what are you thinking? What are you saying this man did not do in game number one that he need that he should do and needs to do in game number two? I will say this. Justin Fields has already acknowledged this very thing and says he has to work on it. It's crazy, isn't it? As good of a game as he had on the ground and even through the air, he is still finding ways to improve. And these are the same things that people like myself and you and even someone that's a casual observer, they say, he went 20 for 21. Hold on. This doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem logical. He didn't have a near-perfect game. It was close, but there were some things, numerous things. I'll just list one. There were numerous things that he did not do right that he needs to fix and do better during game number two. The one thing that I want to pinpoint right now is Justin Fields did not throw the ball away once. Not once. Not one time. We all know one. We all know what one means. You you know what it is. The game Uno. You all know. We play Uno all the time. Growing up, Uno was a fun game. I used to sell cars and you could throw all the shade, throw all the jokes, all of the, you were a con artist, weren't you, Jay? No, I was not. I was one of the honest ones. I know people that I'm friends with that listen to this podcast. They know stories. Or, well, kind of. Not 
some decent ones. I don't let all the stuff get out. Cause trust me, trust me. If I let all the stuff get out, they would look. They would look at Jamie like you worked there that long. Not that you were a part of the the bad stuff. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it that way. But gently, the bad stuff. But what I will say is, they'll be like you were a part of that for that. Like, unfortunately, unfortunately, the the money was kind of good at times. So I I, I I was I stuck around for way too long. I'll say that. I'm not, I'm not there anymore. I'm not there anymore. You can tell. Well, as I'm talking, a smile on my face is because I'm talking to you, and I'm not at that job any. More, but when we were playing, when we were at the dealership, my first winter there, it was, it was cold, baby. Jay does not like cold weather. Jay is also preparing to go to a high school football game tomorrow. So going to the high school football game, that's going to allow me to be outside when it's cold. And Jay does not like that. But Jay also wants to watch really good football. It's the tournament time here in Indiana. And I want to watch football high highly competitive football so I will go out there and do that to watch a local team a community come around, come around a school to support them so I'm going to do that but when I was at the dealership cold winters and one time it was snowing and no one was coming in I mean you don't, you don't want to buy a car when it's when it's ne- when it's 10 de- negative 10 degrees outside and it's ice on the ground you ain't trying to drive it at are you no 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 great cool let Jay and the boys play uno on their phones and trust me I message games. I didn't know how much fun it would be playing a game on my phone that way when you got four of us around on our phones playing. Ooh, well, I think it was like Crazy Eights, but still same, same concept. Crazy Eights. I'm I'm calling it Uno right now. You know how it is. You get Uno. You 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 yell you yell Uno. So in that game, when you got the one card, you said you would say Uno. Not same. Not the same name, but we're utilizing it right now. Uno. Why? Because you have one. You have won. And Justin Fields, the one thing that I believe Justin Fields needs to do in game number two that he didn't do in game number one, throw the ball away. You want to preserve your body? Preserve those hits? You don't want to be hit like Tim Tebow, do you? No. Oh, oh Joey B, Joe Burrow, you don't want to be sacked like him, do you? No. That atrocious offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals, you don't want to get hit like that, do you? No, sir. Re. Bob, you don't at all. It's not fun getting hit like that. I've been hit like that. One of the biggest hits that I had ever had playing football came in the tournament in my high school playing days. And what also happened, my dad was in the stands. I have, I, of course, I have buddies, buddies on the sidelines. So when I had that kind of hit, normally I went more towards the crowd where the water was. When I had that hit, buddy, I went away. I went away from that one. Why? I didn't want to get embarrassed. I didn't want to see all the have everybody get on my head for that hit. So I was a, I want to say I was a senior. I, I, I maybe a junior, junior. I was a junior, and they had called freshmen up from the freshman football team to come up and dress varsity for the tournament. It was second round playing Warren Central. They they beat us bad, and I got hit pretty hard as well. So I went around, and it was a couple of my brother's buddies. I knew both of them. I think it was Jordan Ridley and somebody else. They looked at me. They didn't even really say nothing. They just looked at me and laughed and smiled. I said, hey, man, hey, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Those hits aren't fun to take. They're not fun at all. Justin Fields wants to preserve his body, and I'm sure you want Justin Fields to preserve his body as well. One thing I mentioned earlier at the Penn State Nittany Lions don't want the Buckeyes to do is have an established, successful running game that does not include Justin Fields. Another thing they don't want Justin Fields to do is throw the ball away. Hey, 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 he doesn't throw the ball away. It could be an interception. Throw the ball away, Justin. Live to see another day. Hey, Justin Fields, you got to use your internal clock. At some point, you're going to have these guys on the D-line chopping at the bit to hit you. Throw the ball away to see, to live to see another day. It's very simple to say, hard to execute. And hard to remember because it's an, it's an internal nature of an athlete to always fight to keep going, fight for the extra yard. We saw that we saw that in game number one. Justin feels like it was a two yard loss, and all of a sudden he got a five or six yard gain, maybe seven yard gain out of that, just because of the power and balance that he had on that run. Hey, y- hey guys, establish a running game, very key. Number two, throw. The ball away, Justin Fields. Guys, one more thing. We'll be, we'll be right, trust me, right back. For those of you on the podcast, those of you right here with me on WKYC, we're just going to keep on rolling and talk about Chris Olave and the status of if he will play or will he not play this weekend. 
Chris Alave. I was recently on a Zoom call with some other podcast hosts on the Locked On Podcast Network. These were all college. Um, these are all, all host of college teams. Uh, Asher Lowe hosts Lock, Locked On uh, Badgers. I've done some stuff with him before. The Locked On uh, Hawkeyes host was on there. There was another gentleman on there. I'm new to the network, so I don't know everybody's name uh, his in face as well. So there's another gentleman on there. Didn't catch what show that he hosts. And then also David Locke, the CEO of the network, hopped in after about 20 minutes in. Um, but the guy that was running the show, the, the, the meeting, the Zoom call, Ross Jackson, host of Locked on Saints. The very first thing that Ross said to me when I got on was, hey, Jay, I would love to have Chris Olave on my team. And I, I, I kind of laughed, chuckled, uh, kind of uh, laugh, laughed a little bit. I also h- cover the Colts so uh, for a podcast, full press coverage. So I looked at him, laughed, smiled, kind of looked down a little bit. And then I said, you know, Ross, I mean, I think everybody would like him. I didn't say the Colts because Colts, I would have gone on a long rant about what I think the Colts need at on the team to make them better. Receiver, a, a good receiver, an elite receiver out of college as one of them. And Chris Olave, so smooth, so smooth. We all remember Gus Johnson when he was ooing and eyeing at the play of Chris Olave. We all remember that. We all remember Joel Klatt where he went and started uh, waxing uh, eloquently in the way that Chris Alave was playing. We all we all saw the smoothness and the grace and the excellent hands that he put on display during that game on Saturday. And we all saw when he went down in the third quarter. And the immediate thought was, will Chris Alave play? That was a thought in a lot of people's minds. I don't want to seem like I'm that guy, but I kind of am. I assumed that he was going to play again this weekend. I, I did. Uh, maybe it's just me uh kind of well uh trying to be optimistic i've been trying to be optimistic the entire time the big 10 uh canceled i won't say postponing i ain't gonna be that guy uh canceled the season i would say oh, they're gonna play they're gonna play in the fall they're gonna play in the fall i'm not, I'm not just saying this you go to the jay Stevens podcast i will truly and you you'll be able to you'll be able to check it out go back and check the tape i have said for a while they will play. That's been on record. That's been there. That's not going to change. They will play. So I'm normally an optimistic guy. That kind of goes into the Chris Olave thing. I didn't think the hit or the injury that he suffered that game would derail him or push him back and not allow him to play this upcoming week. But here we are. It's Thursday, October 29th. Is there any clear, is there a clear cut answer? Nah. What did, what did Ryan Day say? Quote, we'll see as the week goes on End quote. He also said that if he can't play, we'll move some things around. Keep in mind, one thing I think that's in, that is in, that is in his mind that may not be in yours is this. Last year, Garrett Wilson played on the outside. He didn't play slot, re- slot receiver. He played on the outside primarily. This year, he's playing slot receiver. And he loves his new role. He he loves it. He 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 thinks he he thinks he's going to get favorable matchups. He thinks he can uh, exploit what the defense throws at him, no matter if it's a zone or man look or scheme, or if you're dropping into uh, dropping a D in into coverage. And Garrett Wilson happens to be for a quick pass in the in the flat. He believes he truly believes he's going to get favorable matchups there. And I'm right there with him. I think it's going to be a phenomenal year. We already saw in game number one, he had seven catches, led the team in receptions. We will see, I, I, I will say, there will probably be at least one more game where he leads the team in receptions another time. Also, what I think is very, very key here with Garrett Wilson is his confidence. Not his skill set, but the confidence that he has. The skill set as well, being able to play outside and inside, being that versatile. If Alave does not play, you can still play Wilson on the outside and the inside. Another key note about Chris Alave, we can only go off a of speak. We know coaches in college, they kind of keep things to themselves. They don't want to let things get out. The news that was in the Wisconsin, you, you, you have sources. And once those sources figure out what's going on, uh, and once the news gets to the beat writers, beat writers or the reporters, they'll report on the news once they get two to three sources that confirm the news that they got from the original voice or the original person. So Garrett Wilson made this comment. He said he's super confident Olave will play. 
We got a coach in Ryan Day who's not going to let you know what he's thinking, not going to let everything out, especially on a Wednesday press conference. He's not that kind of guy. And we know college coaches, they don't want to let you know anything at all. We'll see as the week goes on. The quote that came from Garrett Wilson is super confident. You're going to ask me, Jay, what do you think? Well, I kind of already told you earlier. I told you I'm an optimistic guy. I told you that things in me, I, I try to be optimistic. And when the injury first happened, I didn't think it was going to, to derail him and not allow him to play in this weekend's matchup. So I truly believe he will play. What is that going off of? Just my gut. That's it. it, it I'm just being honest with you. I got quotes here. Uh, I, I don't have an injury report like I get when I cover the Colts. I get injury report where the Indianapolis Colts Twitter page will tweet out, tweet out the injury report after Wednesday's practice, after Thursday's practice, after Friday's practice. I mean, there are things there, details there that are detailed out. A light practice, full participant, did not practice. Why they weren't there? Was it rest? Was it family? Uh, was it an ankle? Uh, was it a knee? Uh, was it a was it a concussion? A head? Uh, was it a hand or an elbow? I mean, they they list things out detailed in college. You don't get that. I'm fine with that. I'm used to that. But based off the comments that I have right now, quote, we'll see as the week goes on. End quote, and then quote, super confident. End quote. The first from Ryan Day. The second from Garrett Wilson, the teammate of Chris Olave in the same receiving room as Chris Olave. They are boys on the team, and also they were very, very key and important during last season as well. Truly believe, this is only my gut, but for, based off the status of what I've read, Chris Olave will play based off the status that I read. Don't go out and saying, hey, Jay has inside sources to know that Chris Olave is playing. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. I'm just going off, going off of what I hear, what I read, via, it comes from press conferences, and that is it. Will he play or will he not play? That is to be determined, but my gut tells me Alave will play. The WKYC family in Cleveland, thank you so much for watching this episode of, the, of Locked on Buckeyes. Locked on Buckeyes podcast listeners, thank you so much for coming back a couple days away from the biggest game of the weekend. Come back tomorrow on Friday, Locked on Buckeyes podcast, or whatever app you listen you utilize to listen to, listen to the podcast, Apple, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Google Play iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your fine podcast, go there to listen. We will have a lot to talk about regarding the defense of the Buckeyes and what they need to do. Oh, trust me. <laughs> your boy has a lot to say. Come back tomorrow to hear exactly what will be said about the defense and things they need to do to be successful during this weekend's matchup. You can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07, WKYC family in Cleveland, right there. Follow me right there. Go ahead and do that thing. Uh, also, follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Buckeyes. Guys, come back tomorrow. I got to close this show out the way I have recently. It's a new trend. There's two words I close every show out with, and they are this. Go Bucks!